Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire and this is the Paper Paintings Collage Studio. Today I want to share with you a technique that I like to use when I am collaging florals and that is a way to make leafy branch prints on the gel plate. Now it's not really making leaf prints but rather it's using leaves as masks to create a shape of leaves but to let a lower layer of really interesting patterns that you've made from previous printing show through in the shape of leaves at the end. And I use these leaf prints as sprigs for my floral bouquets when I'm doing large scale floral collages. It's kind of a neat way to create leaves and it's a way to introduce lots of beautiful rich color and pattern from the papers that you've been making with gel plate printing or other processes ultimately bringing them together at the end into a leaf shaped print. So I'm going to share that with you today. It's one of my favorite techniques and it's something that I enjoy working on. So let's get started. Welcome back. I am going to show you how to make leaf masks over your existing beautiful gel prints in order to create leafy shapes that you might like to incorporate in your collage work into floral bouquets. We did that in my most recent online class, Fabulous Florals, and the students' work came out fantastic, and much of the bouquets were created by leaf prints. So this is what we're going to do. We're gonna take some prints that we've already made, some beautiful gel prints that we've made with a bunch of different processes, anything that you have on hand that you You've created with your plate and those are going to be our base layers. You want them to be interesting and have lots of things going on because we are going to mask out those textures and patterns and that's what's going to show through as our leaf pattern. So I've got some golden uh, white acrylic gesso. I've got some leaves from my yard and I've got my gel press gel printing plate. So I'm going to use, um, I don't have this in a squeeze container, my gesso, so I'm going to use a spoon and I'm going to drip out a, a, a thin layer of gesso onto my gel plate. I'm going to spread it with my squeaky brayer. I don't know what happened to my good brayer. It went where the socks go in the dryer um, or it's in some drawer in my studio where I can't find it, but anyway, it's missing. So you have to listen to the squeaks. So I've got the white, it's got a little yellow in it from what was on the plate, but I'm not real worried about that. So I've got my white gesso. Uh, I've got a couple of um, interesting leaves that I picked from my yard. So I'm gonna place them onto the white gesso. This one has a big stem on it. Now I've got that and I am going to start with a practice sheet. I'm gonna start with this magenta and gold and I'm going to Make sure I apply a lot of pressure to get in and down in between so that the white creates a perfect leaf shape. So you want to make sure you're applying pressure around all the leaves, around the stem, in between the leaves. The better pressure you apply, the better, the more precise your print is gonna be. And you can check it by lifting a corner to see where you might need to work on the pressure. So I'm gonna check this one. This one has a lot of difficult, intricate shapes. So I'm gonna apply more pressure there. That's the beauty of the gel plate. It is squishy. So you can press and apply pressure and it is gonna squish in down and in between those, those more dimensional objects such as leaves or string or coins or anything that you put on the plate that might be more than just a flat stencil. So there I've got my leaves. Um, I, could, I could go a little whiter around the outside edges, but I've got my leaf mask shapes there, my first one, and those are pretty cool looking. So I'm gonna take these leaves off the plate, and that's a pretty interesting ghost print. So I'm not going to throw that away. I'm gonna print it onto my white butcher paper and see if I can use that for something down the road. Waste not, want not, as my mother used to say. So 
That'll be interesting with some paint over the top of it. And now I will try, I'll go through this process again. I'll use a little bit more gesso. I don't want to use too much, but I want to try to get a nice white negative shape, negative space shape. So there we go. I'm going to use this time this one. That's a combination of teal and brown with some rubber moon stamps in it. That'll make an interesting uh, lower layer. And I'm going to, this time I'm going to use this one separate in case I wanted to cut it out. And I'll just do it on one side, one edge of this paper. So if I wanted to cut this out cleanly and use it in my bouquet, I'm going to try to get it all on its own with nothing overlapping. There, now I've got a beautiful leaf mask shape with those great brown and teal colors showing through. And I could do the same again on the other side. So I'll just move it over to this side of the plate and I'll rotate the paper. Then I'll have two. Now you can do this with silks if you don't have good leaves in your yard. Um, the thing about silks is that when they get gunked up, eventually you have to throw them out and then you have to buy more. And the thing about um, leaves from nature is when they get gunked up, you can just go pick some more and they are not costing you anything. So I find that to be the way to go. But I live in Florida where we have an abundance of things growing while we could watch things grow here. They grow so fast, so. Okay, so there's my second print of the leaf branch. I love the way that that looks, and I'm going to love cutting that out and putting it into my bouquet of flowers. <laughs> 